wife? Do you have kids? Do you have anything in this world to fight for? I had completely forgotten that I was married. It had never even crossed my mind. I had completely forgotten that I had four children. None of that stuff even crossed my mind because the pain was so um, over the top. But the second she said, what do you have to fight for? Do you have a wife? Do you have children? I realized right in that moment, right there, it wasn't later. It was right in that moment. I knew right then God was talking through her. And the same voice that he just said, if you want to live, you have to fight. It's going to be a hard fight is now speaking through her. God, the Holy Spirit. And he says, you know, do you have a wife? Do you have kids? Obviously he knows, but he's reminding me about my wife, about my kids. See, I couldn't fight for myself. It hurt too bad. There was no way I was done. I would not have fought for myself. In fact, I, a couple times left, it was just up to me. But when God reminded me of my wife and my children, I would fight for them. I'd do anything for my wife and kids. And so uh, she said, don't shut your eyes. Stay here, mister. Stay here. Don't shut your eyes. I'm thinking, lady, every time I shut my eyes, I'm going up there and there's a tunnel. I'm leaving. So you're right. I'm not going to shut my eyes. They ended up, um, <laughs> they had called med flight, but unfortunately an ambulance didn't get called. And so they, there was no way to get me out to the helicopter. So the helicopter didn't even land it just turned around and went back when it realized there was no ambulance at that point they called the ambulance that was all while i was still in the ceiling because i listened to all the those conversations from above being said about okay the helicopter's going back it's a two-hour drive to, to where the helicopter was a two-hour drive i don't know what that is in helicopter flight but but they went back the ambulance came and picked me up and it took me to a, a hospital one half hour away so i went to a hospital a half hour away where it was just a spot for the helicopter to come back, pick me up, and they med flighted me to our state, the state of Wisconsin, our biggest trauma center, um, and where I spent the next year. I had five major operations during the period of that time. The night of the accident, they they brought in the guy, uh, they called in the head, the head trauma surgeon, called him from home, and he finished up the operation. He came out and told my wife that um, she could cross her fingers because he didn't expect me to live. He said in he told her uh, in 11, at that point, it had been 11 years, I think, in 11 years of running that trauma department, he told my wife that he had never, ever seen a body so badly traumatized and make it to the hospital alive. He said he had no idea how I made it. And for anybody that's medical, for any people that are medical, this is, this is one of the two huge miracles. I had five places that major arteries were suffering. Now, we've had these, these uh, documents, my, my medical records looked at by lots and lots of TV shows and lots and lots of people. And just recently, I've been told that I shouldn't say five, that I shouldn't say five arteries, that I should say three arteries because there's a superior mesenteric artery, which is the biggest artery that goes in your midsection of your body for any human. Superior mesenteric artery, it follows along your small intestine. That artery is your biggest one. And mine was completely severed, absolutely cut through in three places. Plus two others, two other arteries severed and two, two other arteries. So that's a total of major arteries severed in five places although it was one of that was one artery severed in three places just to be completely specific and accurate for people listening so i have major artery severed five places and uh, what that's three arteries severed, right so i bled out completely I, i've completely bled out god was doing something with those angels and the and the doctor told my wife i have no idea you know uh, how he made it here because and again, for medical people, it was over two hours from the point the truck fell on me, severed five places, major arteries, to the point that I get to the hospital and they're starting to put blood in me and, and they're going to operate on me. They say if you have one major artery severed, you got eight to 10 minutes before you bleed to death and die. One major artery, eight to 10 minutes, you're going to bleed to death and die at the most, is what I've been told. I had five places, three arteries, five places, and it was over two hours. So God was doing something crazy supernatural with those angels holding me together. So the doctors do their stuff. They tell my wife they don't expect me to live through the hour after they started the, you know, they just scooped it all up, plugged, hooked the arteries back up, and then they told my wife they didn't expect me to live through the hour, that she should cross her fingers. My wife um, was a praying woman. She already had people assembled it from our church. She brought people from our church when she showed up. All she brought with her was her Bible to the hospital. And they said, we're not going to cross our fingers. We're going to thank God for every 30 minutes of life because he only said I was going to live an hour. So they said, okay, you say he's only going to live an hour. Then we're going to thank God for every 30 minutes of life. So every 30 minutes of life that I was still alive, they thank God all night long. And in the morning, I'm still alive. And my wife went back to the doctor and said, you said there's so much operations. A lot of operations need to be done. Are you going to go back in there and keep working? And they said, we didn't expect to live through the night. We still don't expect to live. Three or four hours go by. My wife went and harassed them some more. They started operating on me and they ended up operating on me on and off all week long. 
And uh, and the second huge miracle is this. Adults have, again, I apologize, I don't have the, all the metric conversions on this, but I do have a little bit. But adults have 18 to 24, 22, 24 feet length of small intestine. And so uh, all of my small intestine was removed because it was damaged in the accident, except, and I do know the metric on this, except for, so it goes from... 18 to 20 some feet of small intestine, which I don't know what that is in centimeters, but it goes all the way down to just a little over 100 centimeters. They saved two pieces of small intestine and I had like 100 centimeters left. That's it. That's not enough to live on. So I'm dying in the hospital. I'm starving to death. I lose 65 pounds. I don't eat for months because there's nothing there. It's just into a plastic tube into a bucket. And so they, they save a little bit, but it's not enough to live on. They're feeding the intravenous. I'm dying. God wakes up a man. Two mornings or at 5 a.m. who lived on the far uh, coast, east coast of the United States, woke him up two mornings row and said, buy a plane ticket, fly to Wisconsin, the state that I live in, pray for this guy, me, in the hospital, and I'm going to do a miracle. The guy said God told him that two mornings row. The first time, first morning, he totally blew it off, but he did tell his wife, said, this is really crazy, and they just kind of laughed about it. The second morning when it happened, they immediately bought the ticket. He bought a one uh, uh, instant ticket right on the spot. and for like almost a thousand dollars back then like 900 some bucks that ticket cost him he flew to wisconsin prayed for me in the hospital and because the man uh, god chose to turn on the gift of healing in him right at that moment when he prayed for me in the hospital god did a creative miracle and i instantaneously right on the spot ended up with a total of half of my intestines length so again i'm not sure uh I'm not sure what centimeters length is on a, you know, what centimeters length is for 22 feet or 24 feet, but I know they're saying I have at least 600 centimeters or, you know, or more. So bottom line is nine, seven, it depends because they can't tell exactly because it's all, they said it's too circuitous to completely measure. In other words, it's like a ball of worms, just small intestine. It's all balled up, but they're saying basically I got half my intestines back when that man prayed. So like nine to 11 feet of intestine, boom, out of nowhere. And it's the only reason why I'm alive or I would have died already years ago. So between those two miracles alone, the five places, major artery severed, and then the creative miracle in the intestines, you know, the lady praying me back to life, the angels, you put all that together. I'd been called into ministry as a young man. Literally, I ran away. I, it was a Jonah call. My, I, I, I ran away like Jonah. God called me, but I ran away like Jonah. 18 years went by. The accident happens. And I finally was obedient, finally went in the ministry. We started traveling around the world telling this testimony. And we've been, you know, giving it for the last however many years to as many, whoever wants to listen. My message, if you boil it all down to this, the bottom line for my message is this. God has to be real. God is a God of mercy. There's nothing that you've done that's too bad. You're not too far gone. There's, there's nothing that, it's not too late. I literally was prayed back to life from the dead three times that miracle is not gonna last there's gonna come a day i'm gonna die again the only miracle that lasts is when somebody is gonna receive jesus as lord and savior to have their sins washed away so that the moment their spirit leaves their body like mine did they get to go in that tunnel and go towards the light and get to go to heaven where everything is going to be amazing forever i just hope that encourages you guys